Thanks for Lane, it's me. a pleasure having you. That was great to be here. Thank you so much. So you returned to The Voice, the place where it all began mm -hmm. last this weekend. Uh, how was it to go back? You know how nerve wracking it was? Really? It, I don't, people, if people didn't see, I was shaking. I couldn't even hold the mic still. I was shaking so much. I was so nervous. Every single time during rehearsals, I would trip. And actually on the day, I did it perfectly. And that's why I was laughing with the dancers at the end because they <laughs> knew how difficult it was for me to sit down. But no, yeah, it was, it was great to be back. It was weird as well during the day just seeing all the contestants and seeing all the hustle and the bustle and, and just remembering you were, in, you were involved in that a year ago and a year has gone so quick. It's so quick. Yeah. Unbelievable. So many things have happened this year. Um, but yeah, it's been a great year. And, and are you still in contact with Will I Am, your mentor, yeah, former yeah. mentor? It was great to have, I sat down with him Friday night and we just had a nice conversation and he was just saying how proud he is of me. And it was just great to be in that environment with him. Yeah. Um, I think Ricky Wilson said recently um, that contestants that go on to The Voice don't go with the idea of becoming the next big star or having instant success. You've obviously been in those shoes before. Do you agree with that? Yeah, because um, these things take time. Everyone thinks, oh, you win The Voice or you win X Factor, you win Brits Got Talent and you're automatically a star and you've, you've made it and you're going to have a long career. No. Because you have to work your butt off. You have to continue to work hard and the hard work doesn't come until after the show to continue that momentum, to continue to stay in the public eye and to bring out music. Um, I was doing, I was in the studio writing songs, um, doing back and vocals before I was on The Voice and working hard before and during The Voice as well. So it didn't feel too weird as soon as I won because I just kept on doing what I needed to do. The only thing was you had now a framework around you with a record label and deadlines to meet. So now it's almost a year later um, and you know you've won the voice you've worked and you've released an album now and mm -hmm. um, what would you say is the biggest challenge of coming from a TV show like that do you feel it's helped obviously it's helped you because you've done so well now it's definitely helped me it's provided me with a platform to to almost <coughs> to promote myself and and to perform and to get those great opportunities and not only just for me but for so many other young people in Hackney London and across the country I've been able to bring those young people who I met along the way and they're now in my band all the members in my band are under 19 years old. Wow. They're all under 19. And these are young musicians that I've met along the way. Um, and I just think it's so important that when the tide comes in, all the boats rise together. And I really stand by that. Um, and I think it's important that we continue to inspire so many young people. Um, so it wasn't just, I don't, everyone's like, oh, did it hinder you? No, it didn't hinder me at all winning the voice. It really helped me. I got to meet hundreds and hundreds of young people full of aspirations, full of goals. And I was just there to make them believe that they can achieve those goals and, and to encourage them obviously to register to vote as well. Mm. Because I went to some sixth form and some universities. And it's for Labour, right? You no, no, it was a school store just to promote okay. my album and to talk about the National Citizen Service. Oh. Um, but obviously I am a Labour supporter. You are? I was in Birmingham the other weekend singing at the Spring Conference where my trousers ripped. Um, <laughs> but we won't talk about that now, will we? Was that on stage and on stage? It came off stage. <laughs> a massive rip just oh, took place. God. and. <laughs> I think Chuko Munda, um, who's the MP mm -hmm. for South London, he chuckled a bit. Mm -hmm. I was like, why are you laughing? What are you laughing for? <laughs> Until I got out and I'm like, I'm feeling this breeze. And I looked and there was a, it wasn't like, it wasn't because normally you rip during this um, in part of the scene. It mm -hmm. wasn't part of no scene. So you are quite friendly in political circles. Mm -hmm. Ed Miliband, would you yeah. say he's a friend? Yeah, I would mate? Say, yeah, he's one of my mates. Um, he called me up. I, when he called me the morning after I won, I was like, what the? I said, Ed, how did you get my number? I'm thinking, how the hell did he get, me, did he get my number? But he, he called me to congratulate me. I was just like, wow, this is one of the it, it, one of the future prime ministers of our country. And he's calling my mobile phone to congratulate me. And, <laughs> and he invited me to his house parties. And when I'm talking about house parties, it's not like... Oh, it's oh, not oh, like oh, rave, oh, rave. It's not rave. It's more... Dinner party. Din not even a dinner party. Champagne, waiters, glasses. It's not mm. a real party. You know. <laughs> you, know, you know when I'm when I'm talking about house party, I'm talking about proper like rave until like five a.m. Yeah. in the morning. But now it was more or less like four till eight, and everyone just a nice mingling and and just being able to be in that environment was just amazing to say. You know, I'm I'm, I'm on a level where I can actually just rub shoulders with leaders of of parties, and it's just crazy, absolutely yeah. crazy. I was I mean, me and Nigel Farage was on the same flight. Can't stand the man, but we're on the same flight. <laughs> Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So is politics something that you'd like to have an involvement with? Yeah, later, in, the later down the, in the future, but right now it's music, my first love and my passion is music and, get, and dealing with that. Mm -hmm. And probably when I'm old and grey, I can join I can, can join the old other old and grey <laughs> MPs in, in Westminster, or maybe even Mayor for London. I like Mayor for London. Mayor, yeah. Um, Prime Minister's a bit too much, but Mayor for London is, 
is, is definitely on, on the It's <laughs> too much headache, right? Too much headache. Prime Minister's too much headache. Do you see how, um, how these leaders of these countries just try... Barack Obama, President mm -hmm. Obama, looks so young. When he, he starts, yeah. And now he's got grey hair, looking like he's, looking like he's got five grandchildren. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Same with David Cameron, his headline, hairline has gone all the way back. Um, but you don't need that. I don't need that. I ain't got time for that. I don't got time for that. Um, but I, I'm, I think Mayor of London, yeah. You could, yeah. Look at Boris Johnson. Boris. If, if he can get in, anyone can, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did notice in your music video for How Will I Know, you have a very beautiful young lady as your mm -hmm. leading love interest. How does Jermaine do with the ladies? <laughs> um, and my love life, I've, I've put my love life on pause since I entered The Voice actually. So I've been single for a while now. Um, and I just think, I remember my ex-girlfriend, she, she was one of those girls that required 24 hour attention. Okay. And I didn't want to lead her on and say, you know, I can give you that 24 hours attention because I couldn't. Because um, I was going on to The Voice, it was going to be very crazy, very manic, and I said, you know, I think we have to call it quits. So we left on good terms, we're still good friends, um, but I'm just enjoying the single life at the moment. Yeah. Going to parties and, <laughs> and not having anyone calling my phone, Jermaine, where are you? So I, I've, got, I've got a great uh, single life and, and I'm just enjoying it. And, but you know what, my love now is my music. And so I take my music out to dinner. Okay. <laughs> I spend time with my music, I travel with my music, and, and that's the great thing about it. Yeah. Any celebrity crushes? Oh, I always, always, you know. Um, I like Leanne on um, Little Mix. Um, I, I've had a crush on Raven Simone from since I was a child. From <laughs> seeing watching That's a Raven on Disney Channel, I've had a huge crush on Raven Simone. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it. But I have loads of friends. Me, should, me and me should be our great friends. And we go mm -hmm. out partying together and, and do performances together as well. I support her, she supports me, so it's great, yeah. Yeah. So you've got the album out finally. I predict a tour coming. Yes, a tour. Busy summer. Tours planned for the summer and, and end of the year, as well as Wireless and other massive festivals, Rochester Castle with on Peter Andrea and the Blue as well. So it's going to be a pretty intense yeah. year and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really excited, really excited. Cool. Well, Jermaine, I'm sure it will all go very well for you. Thank you so Congratulations much. Congratulations on the album and Thanks. the single.